on Sunday left. Then um, I have two of the series left. And so we'll take one tonight and then we'll wrap it up on Sunday. But again, you're welcome here tonight. And please, I beg you in the name of the Lord, avoid sleeping and slumber because God is set to do something remarkable in your life. It's not just, not just saying this, but it's a witness within my spirit that tonight, tonight would cum culminate into what that marvelous help actually means praise the name of the lord hallelujah so together if you will join me as we open our bibles we are reading from the book of second kings chapter six second kings chapter six is the anchor text for today but i'm just so there's so much joy within my spirit and if you don't mind let's just pray in the holy ghost for just one minute mata libre dos kobai Reto zosto libra cabande redeboza, rete bana cabrado sobre de 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 de, la bre de copatande libra dos cobai. Holy Ghost, we pray in the name of Jesus, you will indeed minister to every heart tonight, that everyone is blessed and the name of Jesus is glorified. Ah, Father, I pray, O oh God, that our hearts will be good ground, will be fertile ground to receive this word of righteousness and that, Lord, our lives are transformed in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's just read our anchor text. And please, I beg you to please note every line of this verse because I trust that the Holy Ghost will be using it to open your eyes to deep things of God. Now, the Bible says here that, and it happened after this, that Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. Now, verse 25 says, and there was great famine in Samaria. And it says, indeed, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and one fourth of a cab of dove droppings for five shekels of silver. Then the verse 26 says, then as the king of Israel was passing by, on the wall, a woman cried out to him, saying, Help, my Lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord does not help you, where can I find help from? From the threshing floor or from the winepress? I want you to note that part. The threshing floor or the winepress. And he says, Then the king said to her, what is troubling you now? Look at what happened. And she answered, this woman said to me, give your son that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we bowed my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, give your son that we may eat him. But she has hidden her son. Now it happened that when the king heard the words of the woman, that he tore his clothes as he passed by on the wall. The people looked and there underneath he had sackcloth on his body. Then he said, God do so to me more also if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on him today. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You see, tonight, one of the things that God is going to do is that he's going to expose us to another dimension of his help. Hallelujah. And I will start off by saying that one of the beautiful things of scripture, one of the things that makes the Bible beautiful is that it begins to expose us to how the world was made. Hallelujah. And as a result of how this world was made, it begins to give you a glimpse of the understanding of God or the wisdom of God when he was creating the earth. Praise God. You are exposed to the wisdom of God on how he created the earth. And this is highly important. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 3 verse 19. Proverbs 3 verse 19, it says, The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. Hallelujah. And by understanding, he established the heavens. In other words, 
if you are going to make the most of this side of creation called earth, if there's anything you must deliberately continue to cry to God for, is that, oh Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom because it takes wisdom to navigate this terrain called earth. Little one that Jesus said, it says that the righteous must be wise as serpents and then as gentle as doves because Jesus acknowledged that based on this cosmos, based on this world that we live in, if we are going to make the most of it, there is a need for wisdom. The Bible said that it is through wisdom the earth was founded. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore I said that, I said that the significance, the significance of help is evident at the limitation of the one who is helped. Let me explain this. You see, when God created this earth, he made it intentionally that man must be eternally self must be eternally not self-sufficient. In other words, that at no point in time would man say that, oh, I'm okay, I can do it all by myself. If you look at through scriptures, like for example, the Bible talks about the, the king called Uzziah. It said that this king at the age of 16 was made king. And the Bible said that, and God helped him and he was marvelously helped till he became strong. But when you begin to look at the later verses, the moment he forgot the source of his help, the Bible said that what? God withdrew his honor. Hallelujah. And the reason why God made it that, and I've said it over time and over and over again here in church, that life was never made for man to live independent of God, as is a lie. Because if you think about it, if you say that you are well-made, you are self-made, you can live on your own, the question you would ask yourself is simply this, whose breath is going through your lungs? Because all it takes is for God to withdraw that breath and your alarm clock will not wake you up. You know, someone said that if you want to test the potency of the alarm clock, go and put it by the graveyard. It can wake no one. It can, it, it can wake no one. Praise the name of the Lord. And so for that reason, when God was creating man, he made it such that man must depend on an agency to exist. Look at what it says in Genesis 2 verse 18. It says that what? And God said that it is not good for man to be alone. Hallelujah. And he says that what? I will make him a helper comparable to him. I will make him what? A helper comparable to him. In other words, you understand that if man is going to fulfill his or her destiny, then there must be an outside source that must help. And that is what we call what? The divine help. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why I said it again, that what the significance of help or the degree to which help can be quantified is based on the limitations of the helped. I'll give you a classical example. For somebody who is paralyzed from the waist down, no matter how muscular they are, no matter how muscular they are, you must realize that if they are going to run, yes, your wheelchair can get you so far. But you understand that you are limited because you must outsource an agency if you are going to live your life to the fullest. You know, someone gave a very good example. When I was preparing for this teaching, I came across a material and the lady who was preaching was saying that when you are talking about help, and she gave a very sad story. She said, I know of a man who believed that everything he had, he was responsible for it. And he said that when this man died, he even needed help for the casket to be put into the ground. Just think about it. So you understand that at every point in time, you need the help of God. Hallelujah. 
And so tonight we are looking at divine help and I've shared it in church when we started this series that for you to qualify for the help of God, the help of God is available to people within these two categories. Those who are aware of their limitations, their inadequacies, their shortcomings. In other words, you are very self-aware. You know, you know, you know. That's why when you read Psalm chapter 8, David, I believe, must have been reflected in deep thought. And he had to just ask that question. What is man that you are so mindful of him? What has he done that you have highly exalted him above the angels? Can you imagine that as immortal as angels are, the Bible tells us that men, you and I, mortal men, will judge angels. Praise the name of the Lord. The second category of people who qualify for help are those who are at their wit's end and can no longer carry on. So you look at the anchor text that we read. The king said, if God cannot help you, <laughs> where do you want me to get this help from? From the wine press or from the threshing floor? Because from what I understand from that passage was that when there was abundance, when there was abundance of food, because the issue there at that point in time was hunger. And so the wine press was where they, they went to, to press wine, for want of a better word. And the threshing floor was where they went to knead wheat. In other words, to process food for eating. And so they heavily relied on this storage or this food processing um, channels. But when there was famine, you know, it's, it's almost like you going to a bakery and the bakery is telling you that we don't have bread. So the king is saying, where do you want me to get bread from? The bakery is empty. The storehouses are empty. How do you want me to navigate this? But this is the beauty of it. The king knew and he said that except God helps you, where do you want help to come from? And so just to refresh our mind, and I beg you in the name of Jesus, even as I'm ministering, open your heart. Open your heart. The Lord is doing a quick walk in everyone that is here tonight. I mean, I pray for vigils before I, as I prepare. But today was different. Today was different. I, I, I was specifically, I was in all my faculties from the beginning of today. I was just praying for one thing. That Lord for everyone who would attend tonight's vigil, Father, give them one miracle, minimum one miracle. Praise the name of the Lord. And I will explain why that I was making that prayer as we carry on. And so I expressed that when we were learning this series, we established that help is defined as a process of making things easy, easier or possible for someone to do something by offering one services or resources to improve a situation or problem or be of benefit. You know, I posted it on our status when the media team had done the um, video for promoting this temple with education that we're having on Sunday. And I put it that a scripture dropped in my mind that God is in the midst of them and he's the one who has helped them. And I began to reflect, right? From the journey, at least I've been privileged to be here from day one when we moved into this building. And if you ask me, what has been the consistent thing that God has done to bring us to this point? If I tell you that is not money, that might shock you because in the grand scheme of things, if it was based on money, the things that God has been able to do in our church here, for example, if we were going to value it in money terms, when you tell somebody, they'll tell you that is a lie simply because how could you have done it this cheap and how could you have done it this well? It's only because God has been the one helping us. And how did he help? The Bible says that what? That he will send men. And so when you're talking about help, 
where someone is offering their services or resources. That is one of the ways that God helped us in this church, that people were willing to offer their services below market value that will enable us to be able to afford it. Because, I mean, for a long time, I was showing somebody, I think it was Dulce, I was showing him, I said, this was the offering of our church as early as 2018 on a Sunday, 32 pounds. And you ask me, how were we able to do all these things if it was not for the help of God? And so tonight, I'm prophesying to somebody, what you have may not be enough, but my God will help you. My God will help you. Because then you will acknowledge that this was God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we established it in the course of this series that there are three ways, three major ways that God helps. When God wants to help a man, the first thing he does is to show that man mercy. And we understood from the scripture, it said that what? It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. And the reason why we are not consumed is because his mercy are new every morning. Could you imagine if God's mercy was expiring? Therefore, if I misbehaved today, because the mercy of God tomorrow has expired, when I enter tomorrow, I experience judgment. That's why James will say that what? That mercy will prevail over judgment. It's a system engineered by God to ensure that you and I are never without help. Because if not for mercy, you and I will lack help till eternity. That's why Romans 9 verse 11 will say that what? It is not of him that runneth, not of him that willeth, but it's of God that showeth mercy. Number two, which we'll be learning on Sunday. That's why I said that I, I had to break it down. On Sunday, I'll be sharing how God uses men to help. But for the sake of tonight... We are looking at miracles. And that's why, I'm, I'm, I, again, I'm praying from the depth and the sincerity of my heart that may God give every one of us that is here, even for those who will listen to this recording later, that may God give you a miracle. Because you see, when that miracle comes, everyone would have to acknowledge that it was God. Look at what is defined as a miracle. When I was researching, the BBC wrote that a miracle is an extraordinary event that goes against nature and cannot be explained by science. And it says that Christians believe is caused by God. Let's break it down. The Bible, at least archaeologists have it, that there is a proof that at some point in time, the sea was parted. Meteorologists have it on record that at some point in time in the course of human history, the sun's rotation around the earth or the earth's rotation around the sun was distorted. And why was it distorted? From the Bible, we saw that a young man called Joshua prayed to the Lord and said, let the sun stand still till we smite all our enemies. My brothers and my sisters, if that is not a miracle, I don't know what it is. Somebody else said that a miracle is an event that involves the direct and powerful action of God transcending the ordinary laws of nature and defying common expectations of behaviors. And it says miracles are extraordinary occurrences that can only be attributed to the supernatural work of God and demonstrate his involvement in human level. Again, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you and your family will experience a miracle from tonight in the name of Jesus. And this is the reason why I say it. You see, we established that God has three channels of help. 
He uses his mercy to help. He will send men your way to help. But one of the reasons why miracles are in place is because there are certain situations that you cannot wait for time. Time becomes a disadvantage. Praise God. Time becomes a disadvantage. Let me explain. Let us look at the anchor text that we read. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 24. It says that what? And it happened after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. And it says, and there was great famine in Samaria. Now let's pause there. This is why I say that there are some times when that the reason why God designed a miracle is where you are lacking behind. In other words, you don't have any more time. You don't have time. Now, we know from agriculture that if we're going to solve a famine, then we will need to first and foremost go through planting season. Now, you know that some plants could be perennial, annual crops, and so chances are that by the time you plant it, you might even die before the thing harvests. And so God, at that point in time, the king was very much aware that even if they had seeds and somebody came now and said, oh, I see the famine in Samaria. I'm so benevolent. The best thing I can do for you is here are seeds, plant it on the ground. And when it grows, everybody will have food to eat. But the question is, while I'm waiting for it to harvest, what will I eat before that time? So you understand that at that point in time, time was a disadvantage. And so when you read the verse 27, the king was very much aware that the circumstance that we are in now, except God does not, except God helps us, there's no hope. Praise God. Except God intervenes in this situation, there is no hope for you and I. And this is how you begin to appreciate the things that God is doing in the life of his people. That when time becomes a disadvantage for you, what you are praying for at that point in time is a miracle. That God Except you don't do and except you do something now, it is finished. I'm making you understand this that when it's time to pray, you are praying with every sense of fervency that God, so you understand, <clears throat> excuse me. So you understand, for example, when the case of Jacob and Esau, when you read that scripture, because of how Jacob short short changed Esau. Esau said, let me finish mourning my father. Only God help me. I must kill this boy today. So when Esau made those claims, Jacob had to run for his life. And now he was now returning and he knew that if it was based on what I heard Esau said he would do to me, ha, God, you just must help. And so when he was holding the end of the Lord and saying, I will not let you go until you bless. He knew what he was saying. That God, you just must help me. If not, I'm finished. I don't know if there is somebody like that tonight. But all I'm here to tell you is that help is on the way. That what you need is a miracle. What you need is a miracle. Perhaps time has passed. And at that point in time, what you need is a miracle. There's no room for process any longer. But can I tell you this? God is still in the business of doing miracles. That's, that's a word for somebody here tonight. That God is still in the business of doing miracles. The Bible tells us, I believe it was in Hebrews 3 verse 13, it says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
And so even David understood the need for this help. And therefore he cried out and said, I look up to the mountains. From whence does my help come from? He says, my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. What I'm trying to use this scripture to bring to your consciousness is that when you find yourself in a fix, because for some of us, whenever we are challenged, I'm not saying that it's wrong to vent your challenges to somebody, but I will encourage if you are going to vent or to lament of your challenges, lament your challenges to somebody who can do something about it. And what do I mean? Either they hold hands in faith with you to pray, they are willing to agree between the place of prayer to stand in the and say, let's agree that this thing must come to an end. Praise the name of the Lord. And so David understood that if I'm going to enjoy help, that the help that I need, because, you know, the Bible said that vain is the help of man. Psalm 60 verse 11, that the help of man is useless. Psalm 20 said that some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. It says, but our trust is in the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Because that is the proper person to put your trust in. That when you are challenged, you know who to put your focus upon. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at the story of Paul. Look at the story of Paul. So I make you understand because the reason why Paul was able to last long was because he enjoyed the help of God. Let's look at this scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 from verses 22. This was what he was narrating to the church in Corinth. And he says, are they Hebrews? He says, so am I. Are they Israelites? Because I was trying to paint the sufferings he has gone through for the sake of Christ. He says, are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? He says, I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequently. It says, in deaths, often. It says, from the Jews. He began to narrate it. He says, from the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Five times. That's already 200 lashes minus one. So, 199. It says three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. We saw it in the book of Acts where they had stoned him thinking he was dead. They carried him and he rose up again. Why? Because he was, look at, it says three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness, it says often, in hunger and in thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. But look at what it says in the book of Acts 22 22. It says, having therefore obtained help from where? From God. It says, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other than the things that those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. It says, having obtained help of God, I pray for somebody here tonight that all throughout your long life, the testimony you would say in old age is that I know of a God and his name is Ebenezer. That I, 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 I have lived this long not because of human wisdom, not because of intellect, neither is it on account of connections, but simply because the Jehovah held my hand and told me, let us go. Hi. May that be our testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so the question tonight, or if we're going to enjoy, to experience a miracle, then what protocols must be observed if we're going to, because you understand this, right? 
There's a reason why Jesus told the disciples and said, it is to your advantage that I go. He says, for if I do not go, the Father will not send the helper. And that helper was talking about what? The, the Holy Spirit. Every time you see a miracle, it's only because the power of God was at work in that situation. Don't forget our definition. It says that it's an event that involves the direct powerful action of God. And the, and the Holy Spirit is the one in the Godhead who is responsible for the manifestation of the power of God. So, for example, according to the apostles, it says that what? And God, it says who the Holy Spirit, who Jesus, having been anointed by the Holy Spirit, went about doing good and healing all manner of diseases. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came upon him. What I'm trying to make you understand tonight is that whenever you are experiencing or in need of a miracle, the agency or the person responsible for miracles is the Holy Ghost. When you look at diverse ministries of great men and women of God, both present and those who have joined the innumerable cloud of witnesses, the Holy Spirit was the one responsible for the manifestation. That's why the Bible says it in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. It says, For and God was with them, confirming the words with what? Signs following. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so tonight, we're just going to be, because we'll have at least decent time to pray. First things first, how then do we engage the miraculous for divine help? Number one, is that if you are going to enjoy the miraculous, you must approach God in faith. You must approach God in faith. Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6 and verse 11. Hebrews 6, Hebrews 11 6, sorry, and Hebrews 11 11. The Bible says it in Hebrews 11 verse 6. It says, and it is important possible to please God. It says without faith. It says for anyone who wants to come to him for a miracle, I'm paraphrasing now, must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Hallelujah. Verse 11, it says that what? It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, although she was barren and was too old. What did we say was a miracle? An extraordinary event that goes against nature and cannot be explained by science. How can you explain it? That a woman will be able to give birth at 90. Praise God. And he said that the reason why she was able to do this was because she believed that God will keep his promise. I pray for anyone whose faith is failing, that by the mercy of God, your faith comes alive right now in the name of Jesus. That for anyone whose faith, I just feel it, that there's somebody who is gasping for air, not physically, but emotionally, on account of your current situation, you are gasping for breath. It's exhausting, and and you are you are you have come to your wit's end. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that your faith will not fail, because the mercy of God will not only prevail, but you would receive the gift of faith. You would, that's that's the assignment of the Holy Ghost. I remember when I was listening to Bishop David Oedipo, and he said that when he received that gift of faith, one of the things that began to happen was he began to believe God for anything. If God says that I will walk in the sky, I will believe it for him because he has been the one who said it. And so for someone that is here tonight, I pray again for you that your faith will not fail, but your faith 
will come alive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number two, how do we receive a miracle? By obedience to prophetic decrees. Obedience to prophetic decrees. The Bible says, Concern of Israel, it said, he, Hosea chapter 12, verse 13, it says, by a prophet, the Lord brought out the Israelites out of Egypt. And it says, by a prophet, it was preserved. Don't joke with the prophetic. Whenever prophecies are coming forward, don't joke with it. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. Hezekiah, I believe, yeah, Hezekiah said that believe in the Lord your God and you shall prosper. Believe in his prophets, sorry, and shall prosper and believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at what prophetic decrees can do. 2 Kings chapter 4 from verses 2 to 7. It says, so Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Again, time was no longer on her side. Then he said, go, borrow vessels from everywhere. From all your neighbors, empty vessels, do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you, you and your sons, and then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. The verse 5 said that what? So she went. So she went. When you look at 2 Kings chapter 4, I think, sorry, 2 Kings chapter 5. The story of Naaman. The little Isra Israelite slave was telling her, I know of a man of God. And when he met Elisha, Elisha says, go to Jordan and dip seven times. At first, he wanted to play intelligent of all the rivers to go and dip in. Dirty river, no chance. But you see, you, 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 you neglect prophetic instructions to your detriment. That word is for someone. You are you neglect prophetic instructions to your detriment. Praise God. I know that yes, there are people who would want to prophesy for for personal gain, to be able to to manipulate people. But God forbid that will be me. God forbid. God forbid. I say it. God forbid. You neglect prophetic instructions to your detriment. Elisha said, go dip yourself seven times, not six, not eight, seven. And the Bible said that he foolishly obeyed. And at the seventh time, he came out and his skin was like that of a newborn baby. Number three, if you are going to experience the miraculous, then you must ensure that you live in an atmosphere of praise. Just as what praise will engage the Spirit of God, depression is what would, or despondency is what would introduce or welcome the spirit of the enemy. Because the Bible said that the devil goes around the earth to and fro looking for whom he would devour. And how does he identify a prey when you are living in a depressed and a despondent state? That's why Paul will say, rejoice in the Lord again. I say to you, rejoice. Be intentional about setting your atmosphere. So look at the scripture on, on the screen. 7 Chronicles 20 from verse 22. He says, now when they began to sing and to praise, a miracle happened. The Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. And what happened? They were defeated. For the people of Ammon 
and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. Look at the, the highlighted part. He says, and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Can you imagine? When God intervenes, your enemy begins to help you to destroy themselves. That's what a miracle can do. Praise the name of the Lord. Finally, is what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. We saw a circumstance again. Hunger was the order of the day. Jesus asked Peter, how much do we have in our kitty? He said, but only a few. And what is that among so much? When you compare the crowd that is here seeking for food, you know, I was listening to a man of God preach, and he said that in those days, when 5,000 men gather, expect at least more women to be present. And when more women are present, expect at least times three of more children. So the 5,000 head count was only for the men, not inclusive of children and women. Praise God. And the Bible says, John 6 from verse 10, and Jesus said, make them sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in the number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves when he had done what? He had given thanks. He distributed to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish. And he said as much as they wanted. Thanksgiving is what turns your little into much. The enemy would want you to despise what you have. Because don't forget, the Bible says that he that has, more will be given. He that does not have, even what he has will be taken away. So when you begin to murmur, what you have is taken away. But when you begin to give thanks, what you have is multiplied. I think I was preaching a sermon last year on the power of praise. And I said that thanksgiving is like what yeast is to bread. It makes your little into much. Just as how you sprinkle yeast on, on flour and it rises, that is what thanksgiving does. But the enemy will not want you to give thanks because he knows that when you engage in thanksgiving, what you have will be multiplied and that will be to his shame and detriment. So tonight, God has given us a prophetic word. And that prophetic word is in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. It says, do not be afraid. It says, for I am with you. Do not be discouraged. It says, for I am your God. It says, I will strengthen you and help you I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. The Bible said that the arm of the Lord does valiantly. God has never lost a battle. There's a song that I like. It's a Yoruba song by Simi. It says that you have never lost a battle. Never, never lost a battle. And that's the kind of God that we serve. And so tonight we're going to be engaging in moments of prayer. To just begin to, to engage that help. Praise the name of the Lord. This is not the time to sleep. But first and foremost, let's begin to thank God. And say, Father, thank you for the mercy that has been made available through Christ Jesus. Thank you for the mercy that you have made available through Christ Jesus. The Bible says that it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. I want you to cry out to the Lord tonight saying thank you. Thank you for mercy. Lord, if not for mercy, shame would have been my reality. If not for mercy, 
torture would have been the order of my life. But Lord, every day I experience your mercy. That I'm able to be seated here to minister is a proof of your mercy. Father, I thank you. Thank you for this system that has been established to continue to slam it on the face of the devil. One of the reasons why the devil cannot accuse the father before you or accuse you before the father is because for every time he comes to remind God of your wrong, the mercy of God wipes it away. Aye. The mercy of God wipes it away. Therefore, Father, I thank you for your mercy. Father, I thank you for your mercy. I bless you for your mercy. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the mercy that you have made available. Father, I thank you for the mercy that you have made available. I want you to open your mouth and begin to thank God for this mercy. Begin to magnify him for the mercy that is available in Christ Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to thank him. Thank him. Thank him for the mercy of God that has been made available. Thank the Lord. Bless him. Bless his holy name. Father, I thank you. Thank you for your mercy that has been made available in Christ Jesus. Lord, I bless your name, O oh God. I bless you, Father. I bless you, O oh God, for truly you are good. Truly you are merciful. Glory be to your holy name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Amen and amen. The second prayer point we are praying tonight, the prayer point says that, Father, Arise and help me and my household. Psalm 44 says that what? That arise for our help. Arise for our help and redeem us for your mercy's sake. Arise for our help and re redeem us for your mercy's sake. Arise for our help, O oh God, and redeem us for your mercy's sake. That Lord arise. Father, in the name of Jesus, arise. Father, arise, O oh God. Arise, O oh God. Arise, O oh God. Father, arise, O oh God. Arise, O oh God. Arise in the name of Jesus. Arise on our behalf, O oh God. Let God arise. Let God arise. E kadara basoto. E bakande rebe kosotolia. Bragodo berekete, e godo brada bakapai, a godeske teli, o brada bako pente lele lele boza. Father, in the name of Jesus, arise and show us mercy. Arise, O God, arise, O God. Father, arise, O God, that in the name of Jesus, O God, arise. Father, arise, O God, that your name may be glorified in Jesus mighty name we have prayed the next prayer point begin to pray and say father help by the help of the holy spirit grant me the gift of faith grant me the gift of faith i explained it that we are talking about the gift of faith you are talking about the god giving you the capacity to believe him for the unbelievable that lord we pray for the gift of faith Tete te maroto bere ketedia ubrada bakante lele bosa aria masaka alianto rekete kete rodo boroto bere ketede oriaka taya are tozo zolo brodoko pentelia father in the name of jesus by the help of your holy spirit grant me the spirit of faith the gift of faith the grace to believe you for the impossible, that Lord, in the name of Jesus, for your word has said that he that cometh before God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. Father, Father, Orianta Libra Daya, Leko Zoto Rebeke Telia, Rabata Capante Lelebo, Rete Mene Cobrada Bayada, Elia Brada Capanto Rete Kezentelia, Father, in the name of Jesus, O God, Leko Zagada Rabatai, 
Aliabra doze kente libra dos copai. Rade meneko pante liaba. Abe koso toliambra katai. E kapai, you have come for a vigil. Tonight is a night of destiny. E komini kabaya. That Lord, in the name of Jesus, help me, O God, release upon me the gift of faith, the grace to believe you for anything, O God. Ma kapata leke peya. I set my face like a flint, and I would not be ashamed. E zomeni kapande. Ra da 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 da. Malo to be reke tede. Oria sataya kapante lia. Ra de 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 maru kapai. Oria makaiba ra kapante rete. Zobe reke te ke te ke te. Uri bakai. Rabeko. Abrikanta lebre ke te. Zumbe le ke pe te ke te ke te. E zamanda reke Father, in the name of Jesus, blessed be your holy name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The next prayer point we are saying, Father, fulfill your word over my life and my family. The Bible said that God performs the counsel of his messengers, that Lord, in the name of Jesus, every prophetic word that has been released in my direction, that has been released towards my marriage, that has been released towards my children. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let them be a performance. Let them be a performance. For somebody whose time is running out, this is that time to begin to pray and say, Father, that Lord, time is in your hands. Uzabaria Masoya, you are the God of speed. You are the God of speed. Eko Bidi Kapai, Agebere Kozontolia. Father, in the name of Jesus, Leko Bese Telelebosa, Rade de 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 Marubaria Basai, Ubrekete, Avlege de lege de 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 Uzia makambe le koparia bradaya. Father, we bless your name, O God. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. We bless your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. As we have understood tonight, miracles is what enhances. Thanksgiving is what enhances a miracle. Can you begin to declare to us, Father, I thank you that I will see my miracle tonight. I thank you that I will see my miracle tonight. That in the name of Jesus, I will experience the miraculous to the glory and honor of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Abed Setelia Bradoza, Eko Bedeke 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 Ze, Lubrada Bacantelia. Father, we bless your name, O God. Lord, we bless your name, O God. Father, we bless your name, O God. In Jesus mighty and matchless name we have prayed amen and amen gracious father in heaven we just want to say thank you we bless you for tonight lord we begin to i begin to decree and declare for every prayer that has been made to your hearing just as you said to moses as they have said to my hearing so will i do for them father i pray oh god that you would hasten your answers in the name of jesus the bible says in the book of psalm 65 it says with awesome deeds in righteousness shall he answer us that lord oh god in heaven do awesome deeds in our lives oh god that men will acknowledge that this must be God. This must be God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. As you are very much aware, tonight at our vigils, we take the communion. And therefore, I will encourage you to please begin to gather your elements just as we be I begin to pray over them that in the name of Jesus, it shall be the elements, the symbols of the body and the blood of Jesus. Begin to gather your elements. Just one more minute. Le zuzaraba tozo zele lebeke. Oriaba saya kabantelia. 
Megevele gedele gede uzaza labra daya makombelia ele gozo godo ribra daya bagadandelia in Jesus mighty and matchless name we have prayed amen and amen the bible says that when god having created the heavens and the earth he brought it to, and the animals he called adam and the bible says in genesis 2 verse 11 it says that whatsoever adam called it that was his name from that day Therefore, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up these elements before you. Lord, they cease to be ordinary elements, but they stand as a symbol of your body and your blood. And as you have said that, do this in remembrance of me. Lord, as we approach this table, I want us to begin to pray for the mercy and forgiveness of God. The Bible says in the first Corinthians chapter 11 that some approach the table unworthily. That Lord, that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Perhaps there is somebody you are bearing grudge in your heart towards. Begin to lay them at the altar. That the blood of Jesus is able to purge our conscience from dead works. That Father in the name of Jesus, blessed be your holy name, O God. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Amen and amen. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 34 from verses 30, it says, And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. Therefore, we take this bread in the name of the Father, we give you thanks in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. As we take it, our eyes are open to see the wonders of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 6 from verses 55, it says that for my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. It says, as the Father, as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead, and he who eats this bread will live forever. Again, it says, for this is my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And that he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Therefore, we take this in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. We can just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Mala gadale lebra do boro kozete libra kadai. Reto zosto libra kazante mini kabai. The Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name, O God. Thank you, Almighty Father. We trust, O God, in heaven, that at this communion table, O God, lives are perfected in the name of Jesus to the glory and honor of your name. Thank you, Almighty God, in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's just begin to bless God uh, for the life of our pastor. Let's thank God for, for his life.